Hey there guys, my name is Charles Field. I'm a rig welder from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we are with WellTube here. I have Dakota Sterling here. Dakota, what, uh, what's the game plan for the video here? Uh, I think we're kind of doing two parts. Mm. You're going to look through the gaps, be professional at that, see what you got on the first one. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so back feet and from the top, I've also seen the gap. Yeah. The second one, we're going to do a uh, technique we've been using at our job for mm -hmm. is uh, walking the cup, kind of looking more line of sight direct on your puddle. And um, big board is where we really put it into action. So, okay. exercise pipe that's uh, be beneficial. So, yeah, cause mostly the benefit of uh, looking through the gap is very difficult, hard to, to get through positions. Whereas this one is more aesthetics, you know, high end quality, especially like alloys, like really high end quality aesthetics. Basically, so. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. It's fantastic. So essentially with this particular technique, I will be freehanding it. won't be walking the cup, but I'll be freehanding it. You can walk the cup though. Uh, I'll be feeding with a tack here, so it always braces against the tack. And I'll be able to look down inside and just freehand, just kind of watch uh, my uh, visual depth, essentially. Uh, depth perception, sorry. I'll be looking through mostly the side here, and then as I progress, I can keep changing my depth perception, I can watch the pull go in. Um, I have a 532 gap and I have a feathers edge and I have a, a 1 8th uh, dash 6 70s dash 6 filler metal. I'll be starting at about 110 amps and there's different ways to think about this. Uh, usually when you start this particular technique it usually is very cold at the bottom but uh, when you get up to the size here it starts warming up so you can either start at a colder current you'll notice that it's cold don't change the current and then as you progress the current that you need will come at the side there or else uh, I can start at about say 110 amps 105 amps it will start a little bit hot but that way I can turn a, a solid mass into a liquid mass and I won't get frosted because usually it takes about four to seven seconds because if there's no inert gas flowing turning inside the pipe so I could risk getting a little bit of porosity if it takes me too long to turn this from a solid to a liquid. Uh, so if I start at 110 amps, I can start getting it a uh, nice uh, weld puddle, start feeding into it, and then if I need to go down or up, whatever, uh, Dakota here will be changing the welding current. So, you ready to weld? Yeah, ready to weld. <laughs> So basically with the technique, you always want to ensure that your, your disc, the gap is always uniform, especially if you weld up to here. If, if your fill metal is caught, you won't be able to feed evenly. Um, so but also, also uh, you'll have the fill metal brace against the tack, and this will be your pivot point. So it just helps control everything. You can either feed it, you can either feed it like this with your fingers like that, or else you can feed it like a syringe. There's different techniques for that. Nice thing with the Miller, with the, uh, the touch start or lift arc technology is you can, uh, when you're in the field, you're not having room in the pipe rack to have a, uh, a foot pedal, remote. Sometimes you're lucky, you can have a helper on the remote. Um, a lot of the time you're on your own. So you have to lift arc, you touch your tungsten, you're not worried about pieces breaking off. You can hold it there, get in position, touch your arc, lift off and then start your puddle and weld away, snap out of it and uh, continue on. Basically, Travis is just keeping the rod in the puddle to build up the support on the inside. Of course, on the bottom, you're fighting with gravity. So having your amperage dialed in where it's enough to fuse, it's not super hot where the puddle wants to droop down on you, and adding enough material to get that build up on the inside. Um, having, using a 1 8 filler tends to chill the puddle out a little more so than the 332. As well, you can slow down on your feed rate instead of having to feed a 332 very fast. And the carbon steel, a 70S6 wire, helps a lot uh, with a cleaner puddle, as well as the material flowing. You can see on the inside, it's got a nice consistent finish. A little bit of silica on the inside. Um, 70S6 flows out really nice. It's not, uh, you're not fighting with a little bit of any sluggishness. Um, nice clean puddle, wetting out on the outside. Uh, so for your next pass, minimal cleanup right on to the uh, hot pass and then fill passes after. And then maybe turn it down a little bit more. There is 98. How's that? And I'm running out of fill metal. There we go. That's another fill. Now this technique is really beneficial 
because having gravity uh, on the bottom, your puddle always wants to droop. Getting that internal support on the pipe, not having a concave bead. When X-ray shoots it, you got support inside. Uh, you know, nice clean bead penetration. They're not calling for concavity, low root. You got edges, support, and uh, full penetration. When X-ray sees that, they can't say anything. Um, speeding from the outside sometimes is prone to having that concavity, not quite getting enough support across the bottom. Can you turn me down a little bit more? I just want a little bit more control over the puddle. Yeah. There is 93. I did. Oh, don't forget the the head tilt. Every time you do the the bevel closer to you, you have to look up and tilt your head. And then when you uh, do the bevel farthest away from you, uh, you have to look down to catch it. So it's constantly a head nod up and down. And then uh, the tech, uh, well, the welding current I'm using right now. It's just enough so when I move from one belt tip to the other, um, the opposing belt tip I just move away from will quickly certify. And I just keep a continuous uh, feed technique on this carbon steel. Basically you just want, uh, if you look at the uh, the one belt I move away from, uh, it just solidifies. So it's very important to have that continuous feed and also the liquefaction and the solidification of the well puddle. And in order to stack uh, metal deposition over distance, you have to get the uh, solidification. So basically I'm using a welding current that is hot, but it's not hot enough, so um, the solid mass of the solid metal, uh, being a solid, it needs to be broken down by the energy that is used to create the well as a liquid. Now the other thing with this technique, uh, uh, usually you can uh, do this technique at the bottom there, and usually when you get to the side, you can actually just change your technique and start walking the cup. It's actually, it's actually pretty easy, but um, right now I'm just showing this particular technique with the freehand. So that's the reason why I'm just kind of freehanding uh, the whole weld all the way out here rather than just walking the cup, especially even at the top of the pipe here. As it gets to the top there, your filler metal changes, your uh, location of your filler metal in your puddle changes a little bit because of gravity fighting the other way now, right Travis? Oh yes. And then what I'll do here, uh, I just left the, uh, see the nice thing about these different metals is that uh, when you break the arc, you usually want to leave the filler metal in here. Uh, because otherwise, if you if you remove the filament metal, uh, you will get like uh, um, it'll kind of just get really really heavy uh, on when you break the arc uh, when you pull the filament metal out and then break the arc. Uh, but this way, if you leave the filament metal in, your well puddle remains uniform and it can't get too heavy. In hindsight, though, I should have pulled out before it solidified, but I just said uh, I'd leave it. So, and then what I'll do here is I'll just cut this tack out. I'll feather this and I'll jump on to the opposing side of the pipe here, and then weld from here up to 12 o'clock. Happy with your amperage there, Travis. Oh yeah, it's all good. Another thing to keep in mind when running a grinder through there and opening up your gap is that when you put that disc through a bevel, say you got a 332 gap feather edge, and you put a 1 8 or 532 disc through that gap. You open up the gap, but you also add a land to those bevel tips that were at once feather edge. So to keep in mind that with that land, there's potential uh, to change the welding characteristics as well as add a missed edge. So Travis ran and then you feather out the edges to achieve a, uh, again, a feather's edge before you start welding. He feathered his stop and uh, now he's got his line of sight right where he needs to be to finish off the top side. So right now we're doing the lift arc process. We have the output on on. And so we're just doing straight current, no pulse, no, uh, no remote. Um, this is a situation that me and Travis use a lot with Legion piping fabricators. Out in the field, you don't have space for a foot pedal. Um, you know, sometimes you have your helper for up and down, but you just use this simple process. And it's a very mobile, very easy to achieve in the field situation. Now with the Miller, they offer a, a, um, a touch start remote. And so a one touch or two touch, you turn it, you can use high frequency to achieve no contamination on the uh, starts. As well, you can use the upslope and downslope to your advantage. Uh, especially when I'm adding uh, metal to the fill metal, uh, like I can basically see what it's doing, but also at the same time, uh, you need a feel. I'm, I'm basically like feeling the puddle and how the puddle is, uh, if there's a solid mass of the puddle that hasn't been broken down, if there's not enough energy on it, uh, if I've removed the energy momentarily and, and it has uh, solidified, 
Uh, so basically I'm also getting a real good feel for the bottle. And sometimes uh, with this technique, uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of hold the filament in the middle there. Um, like actually, usually at the bottom, sometimes you're staying on your fit up, you can actually just hold the filament in the middle and just kind of just move really slowly, not even uh, move from belt to belt, and actually it'll just wash out on your own. Uh, but um, right now I'm just kind of washing from belt to belt tip. And uh, Dakota, can you maybe go down 5 amps? Turn it down another 5. We're at 95 there. There you go. So as I mentioned before, having that uh, remote on your torch, you can take advantage of the upslope and downslope, as well as using a high frequency start. And so all you have to do is you can attach it to your TIG torch and you hit one button that uh, initiates the upslope and slowly ramps up. You can adjust the rate um, and ramps up your welding amperage. And then when you're ready to stop, you hit the button again and it'll initiate the downslope. So it's nice, slow, ramp out you're not worried about leaving a pinhole you can slowly ramp down let that puddle cool off and taper off before you stop it it doesn't leave a pinhole you have a nice clean stop uh, no oxid no oxidation oxidization and you're ready to continue on for further passes but can you like, maybe go down to that 93 As well as another style of remote you can have on your TIG torch is the uh, whether a wheel or kind of a belt and uh, so you can adjust your heat on your own with uh, your thumb or another finger. And you can initiate your arc start ramp up to uh, uh, welding amperage with that as well as go up and down while welding. Go down a little bit. 90. Okay. So again on this side as Travis comes up to the side, you now have gravity fighting another way with your puddle. So as you come up to the side, we go down a little bit, adjust your heat. That way instead of having to adjust your movement and uh, travel speed, you can continue, uh, continue to achieve the exact same or very similar bead contour and penetration. Another time this root technique can come in handy is in real tight spots, whether plant tie-in or uh, boiler tubes or other areas where you can't get your full head in instead of having a mirror weld the root you can actually uh, exactly what Travis is doing you're looking through feeding and uh, you can achieve you ensure your penetration make sure your internal is looking perfect without having to guess from the outside well I know also with this technique too um, quite often like a lot of welders they, they start to uh, confide in you uh, if they're having any troubles. Uh, sometimes you might get a guy who might come grab you just to run a spot or rerun uh, uh, an area that they're having trouble or uh, you know maybe having trouble welding with uh, both hands and uh, sometimes they may may leave where there's a lot of metal deposition a lot of the root pass is done and uh, you encounter um, a, a spot that they just can't get to that you have to use this technique and um, it's very very beneficial in that sense. That's a good point, Travis, because in the field, you can't move stuff around. There's no uh, spinning the pipe, no moving the pipes down, lifting it out. That's some of those tie-ins. The where it sits is where it sits. Like you say, if there's a spot you got to rerun at the back, you don't have that option. Another benefit with the uh, Miller Lift Art technology Instead of uh, every time you touch your tungsten, there's the potential for breaking the tip off, contaminating the pipe. But with this, uh, this technology they have, it's a very soft start. It doesn't add your full amperage until it senses that it touches, then ramps up the amperage. Another thing that really helps with is uh, your tungsten life. Is you know When you go to restart on that next weld or after your tie-in, that tungsten is still in perfect shape. It's good to go. You're not having to stop sharpen your tungsten or go find a new one, climb down and sharpen everything. Another note to make is the uh, the tungsten angle. Uh, throughout the entire weld you're aiming to keep that tungsten angle right towards the center of the pipe and uh, that keeps the force of that arc helps push your material your puddle inside 
as well as you're not shooting heat forward and burning those bevel edges away. Say, uh, you keep that puddle focused right where it needs to be. Also, I want to mention with these uh, Dynasty's machines, I have the 350 and the 200 model, also the Maxter uh, 161, and uh, you know, it's very, very nice. You see, I, I, uh, I've done some of my best welding with the Dynasty. Uh, I do have the 350. Uh, I've done a lot of aluminum and a lot of titanium. And uh, when I was working at Legion there, I found I, I did my best welds with uh, using the Dynasty plug-in off, uh, off an energy drive power source. And um, so we're doing a lot of uh, 52-inch, 688 wall, and a lot of uh, really thick, uh, heavy stainless, uh, chrome, carbon. And uh, the, the beauty of this thing, uh, you see Dakota and I were doing a tag team on a hydro cap one time. And uh, uh, Dakota at the time, he did not yet buy a, a Dynasty 400. Uh, and I was like, Dakota, you gotta buy this thing. This thing's fantastic. You know, because I've been using this for, I've, I've had it brand new since probably 20, 2007. Can you go up a little bit, Dakota? What's up? Up, up five amps. 95. And probably to 100. 100? Yeah. Yeah, you're, probably to 105 maybe. 105, you're turning your amperage up. As he comes uh, final clo closure, uh, you want to make sure you're fusing and burning into the other side of the root. So turning your amperage up, having your helper turn your amperage up as you make that final tie-in can really help ensure that proper level of fusion. It, uh, it amazed me when we did use that Dynasty on the hydro cap. Now hydro caps, they don't fit up as a perfect weld. You don't need the root in for some companies. So it was fit up with major high-low, less than ideal gap, and that Dynasty, the puddle flew in there, and without even trying, caught that high-low, caught the misalignment, fused the edges. That's what uh, convinced me to buy the Dynasty.